Hi everyone, so this is the first flip video for the basic concepts introduction to the A-level course, year one at Ashton Sixmore College. Now, uh, at the start of your basic concepts in chemistry notes, we've got to look at subatomic particles. So we've got to look at all the bits that make up the atom in a little bit more detail. Most of this is recap from GCSE anyway, but we are gonna request that certain accuracies are made with certain numbers, particularly down here for the relative mass of the electron. You'll find different versions of that online. We're gonna have um, a set standard that we expect at the college. Now, for the neutron then, and proton and electron, we are looking at their location and also what kind of relative mass and relative charge they have as well. I've just written charge here, but really it is a relative charge because there is a real charge associated with each of these. But this relative charge and then relative mass, more importantly, that's something you definitely need to be able to use. Um, it's a comparative scale. Everything is compared to each other. And so we develop a scale that's based on comparison. That's why it's called relative. So to begin with, the neutron, no surprises here with newt being part of its name, the neutron actually has a relative charge of zero. There's no charge there whatsoever. So you can complete this table inside your notes. The proton, however, has a relative charge of plus one. So it's got that positive feature. Do make sure you put plus one, don't just put plus. And the electron, which is found in shells, so different from these two, which are both found in the nucleus, the electrons are found in shells surrounding the nucleus, so these are on the outside. The electron has a charge of minus one. Now, relative mass, again, there are real masses in grams for all of these, but the real mass in grams was so small that they developed this relative scale to make these numbers easier to deal with. Now, the neutron's relative mass is one. We don't need a plus or anything next to that. The proton's relative mass is the same as the neutron. It's also one. And these two are found in the nucleus, which means the total relative mass of the nucleus for any atom is actually the sum of these two numbers. Now, the electrons are obviously found in the shells, which means they don't contribute to the mass um, from the nucleus. And furthermore, they don't really contribute to the mass overall in any way, since their relative mass is actually one divided by 1,840. So it's actually a fraction. It's one one thousandth eight hundred and fortieth of the relative mass of a proton. They are so much smaller. They are almost negligible in size compared to the protons and neutrons. But notice that they still have an equal and opposite charge to the protons. There's a lot of theory out there about electrons being both um, hard particles and waves at the same time. There's lots of theories about what they could actually be. At the moment, we're just going to say that they have a barely uh, recordable mass. They have a negligible mass and they have a one minus negative charge just there. Now, in terms of definitions that you also need to complete for your notes, we've got atomic number. We find this on the periodic table. And for any element, for example, if you were to look at carbon on your periodic table, you would find carbon like so. The atomic number is just here. It's the number of protons and it's absolutely a fixed quantity. You can't change the number of protons of a particular element. I can't just have a carbon with seven protons. If I change the number of protons, then I change the element. The element itself would change. So if I suddenly decide, oh, let's just give carbon an extra proton, it would become nitrogen. So we can't just change the atomic number. And you can always find this for any element on the periodic table. I can't stress this enough. Now the mass number though, this could vary and it can vary because of something we'll get to later. Now the mass number is the sum of all the protons and the neutrons for that particular atom. So for that particular element. Now the number of neutrons can vary from one version of an atom to a next and that's actually described as an isotope which we'll come back to shortly. Just returning to this very, very briefly, what this also means is if I wanted to find out the number of neutrons for a particular atom that I was given, if I knew the mass number and I knew the protons, I could calculate that very easily. I would simply do the mass number, subtract the number of protons, which I would know from the periodic table. We've already mentioned that that's a fixed quantity and that would give me the number of neutrons. So just to go back to it once again, why might the number of neutrons vary? Well, this is because of isotopes. Now, isotopes, by definition, these are atoms of the same element with the same number of protons, but a different number of neutrons in the nucleus. Now, you do have to say in your definition, same number of protons, and you have to say that they have a different number of neutrons. 
Their chemical reactivity, though, is identical. So if I add two different isotopes of carbon, for instance, carbon-12 and carbon-13, these are two different isotopes, but their chemical reactivity is the same. So same chemical behavior. Now, the reason for that is because they actually have the same number of electrons, and electrons determine chemical behavior. Looking down here at this example of bromine, bromine has got two very common isotopes. The two isotopes of bromine are 79 and 81. They are not in a 50-50 split in our atmosphere, under our conditions. They are weighted one way to the other. So for instance, there is actually more of the 79 compared to the 81. And that's why the number on the periodic table that would look like the mass number for bromine is actually an average between these two numbers, taking into account the percentage that is actually 79 compared to the 81. So for instance, the number you see is 79.9 on the periodic table, will explain why that is so in lesson. For now, what you can visibly see is, despite the fact that we have changed from one isotope to another, the number of protons is absolutely identical. The number of electrons over here, because they're both neutral, there's no charge there, no positive and no negative, they're absolutely the same as each other as well. However, the number of neutrons is different. All you need to do is 79 minus 35 for this first one, and it will give you the number of neutrons here equal to 44. We do the same thing again for the 81 minus 35 underneath, and we get the number of neutrons equal to 46. So you can see here they have a different number of neutrons and therefore are classed as isotopes, which we know will have the same chemical behavior because they have the same number of electrons or the same electron configuration you will come to say. I hope that clears up some of the early stuff. You can now complete a table of different isotopes and their proton, neutron, and electron numbers in your notes in advance of the lesson so that we can look over this average just here, which appears on the periodic table, and so that we can look at more complicated examples. I'll see you in the lesson.